So I'm Lisa and I put this video series together. Um, so I guess I just wanted to talk about like my inspirations for doing it, like a little bit about my experience with being mixed race. Uh, yeah, just to like introduce you or like do an outro for it. So yeah, I guess like the three main inspirations for this, so, like the three main inspirations I can think of are, so firstly, like the book British which is by Fua Hirsch and basically she kind of talks about race but like from a mixed race perspective so it's kind of like autobiographical but um also she gives like history and of race and just like a bit of information about like race um but yeah I just thought it was really interesting because I'd never read a book that was like from the mixed race perspective like and I, you know, I read a lot about race, like I also chat a lot about race, like I'm that annoying girl at the party that just won't stop banging on about race, you know, probably gets a bit tiresome for some people, but I guess it's like an important subject. Anyway, I digress. Um, so I guess it was just interesting for me to like, reading a book from a mixed race perspective because I feel like, you know, in the past I haven't really read something like that. Um, so yeah, I recommend anyone to, anyone who's mixed race, anyone who's not mixed race as well, check out the book. Like, it's, it's like, it's very interesting. Um, and I guess like within that book, like one of the main themes, well, yeah, I think it is the main theme that she touches on is kind of like this sense of like lack of belonging it's like this thing that you know you're too white to be black and you're too black to be white and like you just sit within the middle of it and I don't know even in terms of like having parents of like different races like you, you know you look at your or I looked at like the white side of my family so my dad's side of the family and it's just like oh I don't look like these people like you know, with my mum's side of the family, like, you don't really look like those people either. And it's just like, oh, you know, you're kind of, like, in the middle of it all. Uh, so, yeah, I guess that's, like, similar to what, like, Afua Hirsch is, like, saying in her book. I guess, like, you know, there's no land of, like, mixed race people is kind of what she says in the book. And I guess, you know, if you're fully white, probably anywhere in the world you go, you're going to be seen as white. If you're black, probably everywhere, everywhere you go, you're going to be seen as black. But if you're mixed race, like, you know, for example, for me, like, I grew up in, like, a very white area. So, like, when I'm at home, I'm black. It wasn't until I moved to London, I became mixed race. And I guess when I go to Zambia, which is where my mom's from, like, I'm white. So it's kind of like, you know, this thing about not fully fully fitting in in any particular uh, to any particular group um i guess like nowadays we have much more of like a mixed race community um so i think you know now it's like easier to i guess to self-identify it's easier because there's a lot of people going through like similar things to you there's a lot of people who look like you nowadays anyway yeah so i guess yeah, that's like the kind of theme she touches on. Um, another inspiration is this, um, I guess she started out as a YouTuber, I assume she's like, I think she's like a filmmaker now. Uh, basically she did like this video series uh, on YouTube called Strolling and it's this girl named Cecil Amege. And basically the series kind of, it's like this in the same format as this series. So um, it kind of, it's like separate interviews, so each video is like a separate interview with somebody, um, some young black British person, and they basically just talk about, you know, different issues concerning like being black and British, like different issues concerning race, like, you know, different experiences that they've had, like all in the question of like race identity and British like race identity. So I feel like that um, inspired me a lot to do this um, and I guess like probably a third kind of inspiration or something that just made it click in my mind that I wanted to do this series was um, so when I was writing my dissertation so I did it on like media representation of Meghan Markle and I found that um, as I was researching so predominantly I was using like texts and research research papers that were like focused generally on like the black struggle or just being black 
Um, so, however, I wanted to write like a, a separate section about like being mixed race, um, like specifically being mixed race. And as I was like researching into this, I couldn't really find that many articles about like mixed race, being mixed race solely. And I like in no way am I do I want this to be like oh you know mixed race people like oh that's like such a struggle like I, in a way that I don't want to take it away take away from the black struggle because I feel like you know a lot of mixed race people identify with the black struggle as well and so I don't I don't want to say that you know it's it's so separate for that from that like I fully 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 acknowledge that being mixed race you do have a privilege like unfortunately we live in a world where colorism exists which means that you know the lighter your skin like the more desirable the more acceptable you are in society and like so i'm not here to be like you know it's just all all struggle like all doom and gloom i just wanted to talk about it because i feel like it doesn't get talked about enough and so yeah that's kind of why i set out to do this I guess the last thing I wanted to touch on was like a little bit about my experience. I don't want to go like fully in depth because I don't want this video to be super long. Um, so basically I grew up in this town called Halesworth in Suffolk and to give you a bit of context on the town Halesworth, it's where the ex-leader of the BNP, Nick Griffin, grew up. And that's obviously not to say that the whole of Hell's Earth is racist, that's of course not what I'm trying to say, I'm just saying that it's a very, it's a very white area for one and I think, you know, there is maybe some lack of understanding because of the lack of diversity in the area and so I guess when I grew up, like, I guess when I was little, like, I think my family was like first black or one of the first black families to move there and so my dad's white and my mum's black um white english black from zambia and i guess you know I, I first when i was younger obviously i noticed that i was different i looked different to other people i guess at that point you see that you're different but you don't really know what that means and so i don't know i remember when i was younger like having thinking certain things like you know oh i, I really why do i have to have this like kinky hair like you can't see my hair now but um it's like quite like frizzy kinky and obviously every everyone at school had like you know straight long blonde brunette hair and like i was just like why do i have this hair like i want straight hair i want to look like these people like why do i have big lips like why is my nose like a bit flatter like you know i want to i want to look like these people another thing that it's quite problematic but when I was like younger I've only recently really thought about this again because when I was younger you kind of do things but you don't really think about why you're doing them but I don't know so obviously I said my my mum's black and my dad's white and I remember I would hate to go to walk through town with my mum because I didn't want like school kids to look at me and then see my mum with me this black woman with me and like make and then they see that I'm even more different to them and so I guess like when I was younger I always wanted to walk around with my dad like I just almost felt it felt like I had this badge of pride like walking around town with my dad or just like anywhere around that area with my dad because in my mind I thought you know if these kids see me with a white man they're gonna think that I'm like them um I guess like as I grew up when I was like 16 and if you know you start going out at 16 and I definitely feel like I was like fetishized in a way that like not even in a, in a respectful way like more like you know if you get with a mixed race girl it's almost like a prize so moving on I guess when I moved to London like I found people that looked like me uh I f like I felt like I made more like mixed race friends um, who, I don't know, they had the same hair texture as me, which is one thing about being mixed race, I guess, because one of your parents is white, one of your parents is black, so both parents have a different hair texture to you, like my dad's hair, and like all his sister's hair, this straight, like soft, straight, my mum's hair is just like a lot coarser than mine, and so I don't think I've ever really found like hair, there's such a small thing, but I don't think I ever really found hair products 
for me. I, I never really understood my hair because neither both sides of my family didn't really understand my hair. It wasn't until I went to uni and like, you know, I met people who were sharing like, you know, hair tips and stuff like that. So I guess when I moved to London, I, I just felt like I, I understood my identity more. I guess being with other people who were all also mixed race, you know, you, you do, you feel more comfortable within yourself. Um, yeah. So I'm not gonna sit here like rambling because I'm a rambler and I could ramble forever. So yeah, I guess that's my piece on like why I created this music, this music video. So like why I created this mixed race video series. I hope you enjoy watching it or have enjoyed watching it. I hope you've learned a little something like I yeah. If if you want to ask me any questions like absolutely feel free yeah i don't know how to end these things because i'm not like a pro youtuber or whatever so i think i think that's an okay end <laughs>